see Lindelof videos, inverse proportions. Um, I'm really interested in this type of math only because it shows up so much on standardized tests like the SAT and the ACT, GMAT and GREs. So I thought we might as well uh, be prepared to see these types of questions. So a typical question might be this one. I just picked this one up somewhere. Uh, it says a ship has enough food for 600 passengers for three days. And then the question could be something like how long will the food last for if there was 200 passengers? So when we look at a question like this, we just have to ask ourselves a question. What's the relationship between the number of passengers and an amount of food and the amount of days it will feed them? And I think we can agree that if the more passengers there are, the fewer number of days they'll be fed. I think that makes sense, right? So we have this inverse relationship. As one thing increases, the other one decreases. It's a really, really important relationship to be able to spot. And when you see something like that, you have to say to yourself, okay, this is an inverse proportion. And inverse proportions take on, the, take on this form. Y is equal to K over X, where K is this, this constant of variation or constant of proportion. So here we're looking at this and we're like, okay, so all I'm going to do is try to set this thing up as if it was a machine. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to recognize that we have this inverse relationship. I'm going to remember I have this formula. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve, I'm going to try to set up the actual formula. And the way you do that is solve for K. So I say, okay, when I have 600 passengers, I have this constant of variation over three days. So this seems kind of silly at first, but if you can do this, it all gets really, really easy. There's like lots of painter questions. If it takes three guys to paint a house in one day, how many days does it take one person? Or how many days would it take if there were six people? And you look at it, you're like, how the hell will I figure this out? Well, first thing you do is look and see what the relationship is and re recognize that there's this inverse relationship. And the second thing you do is to come up with this formula and to start trying to make a real equation for it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this constant of variation. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, right? If I multiply both sides by 3, you can see that 3 over 3 is 1, and 1 times k is k. So k is equal to 3 times 600 is 1,800. So it may seem kind of dumb, but now I have this equation that says, well, y is equal to 1,800 over x, where x is the number of days, right? So now I can solve any equation. So here's the general form of the equation that I'm going to use now, and it should get easy. And a lot of times you'll see these questions like in three parts or two parts or whatever, and this will just make it much easier. So if we had, we can go back and check and say, okay, well, if we had 600 passengers, how many days would the food last? And if we cross multiply, we would get that x is equal to 300. Now, that might seem stupid to you, but all I'm trying to do is prove that this is going to work. So as I start to apply it some other place, so I say, okay, well, if there was only 200 passengers, should I kill off 400 passengers? How much time will that give me? Uh, assuming I'm not one of the ones that get killed off, is equal to 1,800 over x number of days, right? And we can see by cross multiplying, we get 200 x is equal to 1800, x is equal to 18 over 2, which is 9, so 9 days. So if you have an opportunity and you're on that ship, it, it would. It would pay off a lot for you. You can get three, if you cut the amount of passengers by a third, you'll get three times more days of food. Makes some amount of sense. Now, if it sounds like I'm t saying to you that you should go pushing people off boats, well, I kind of am. No, I'm really not. Sorry. Um, Anyway, these are the type of questions that you're going to see. I'm going to do one or two more of them on another video. I hope this is helpful to you. I just know that you're going to see this on the, on the, AC, on the ACT and definitely on the SAT. So I want you to have um, looked at this before. So hope this is helpful. Your comments are always welcome. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.